for all things great iron and hard top. It's Kevlu and Steve since the sandbox. Since the sandbox fans, your boy Steve, your favorite podcast host, is back. And guys, we know free agency is only a couple weeks away. So I have to tackle some of the biggest names in NFL free agency and where I see the best fits. So before I get into the episode, I need you guys to go and check out three things. All right, everyone go and check out the Meet the People series. Episode three of MTP is with Steph Lewis. Make sure to go and check that out. Go on YouTube or the podcast and check out my position rankings along with my top 25, breaking down the top 25 players in the NFL. Guys, that's can't miss content. Make sure you stay in tune for that. We're about to get into the NFL free agency, guys. Make sure you go and leave a five-star review. Like, follow, share. You guys know the deal. Show some love. We're out here grinding. We're about to get into our free agency coverage. But I have to remind you, our NFL draft coverage is coming real soon. Make sure you guys stay tuned to that. We got mock drafts, rookie prospects, uh, to pro comparisons and match made in heavens where we think that these guys would be best fit. Okay, we're about to jump in with our top free agency guys, best free agency fits. And we're going to start off the list hot, okay? We're going to start off the list with Devontae Adams. And this is a very big name, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, if not the very best wide receiver. And, you know, this is an interesting scenario for Devontae Adams, right? Because... At this point in his career, he's playing his best ball. He wants to get paid. He wants to make sure he's taken care of. But he doesn't know what's going to happen with his quarterback. And then, honestly, I probably wouldn't want to stay in Green Bay if Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to be my quarterback. And no matter where Devontae Adams goes, he can make uh, probably close to $25, $30 million. So there are a lot of teams in the NFL that can use a wide receiver with his production. It's going to be interesting to follow teams like Vegas and the Broncos to see what what they do at their wide receiver position, right? But if you want my honest opinion, I do think Devontae Adams stays back um, in Green Bay and returns. I think, you know, it's going to be a lot harder to sell if Aaron Rodgers doesn't return. But I do think, you know, Aaron Rodgers likes a good movie, enjoys a good TV show when he sees one. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is all being kind of put together as a little stint. But we have seen, you know, great quarterbacks disperse from the places that they originated at. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, uh, Drew Brees, just to name a few. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something similar um, for Green Bay with with Aaron Rodgers uh, and with Devontae Adams. But my best bet is that Devontae Adams returns. Now, going to the defensive side of the ball, J.C. Jackson. Guys, this is probably the biggest name that's hit the free agency market from the cornerback position in a long time. Now, the Patriots would be a little crazy to let J.C. Jackson walk without um, throwing out some offers. Now, what I've heard at this point in time is that, you know, they've kind of lowballed him. And um, I wouldn't be surprised at that because you know how the Patriots are. They like to offer the guys that they drafted, that they retained, uh hometown discount but I don't think JC Jackson's looking for that and the Patriots aren't you know pounding their chest with Tom Brady anymore it's a lot harder to to, you know come by winning and Mac Jones did very well last year um, with his young team with his young core and I'm sure the Patriots are going to build on that but losing somebody like JC Jackson would be absolutely detrimental to that defense now This is someone that I feel like could possibly be franchise tags. We have to keep that in mind. But there are two teams that I think could really use uh, J.C. Jackson's help. But I'm going to pick on one um, in particular. And I think the 49ers. And the 49ers uh, got to the NFC Championship, played against the Rams. And, you know, I think that they exceeded expectations by any means uh, for this year. Because, you know, going back to, to the beginning of this year, probably the first five weeks of the season, um, I definitely thought that the 49ers weren't going to be, you know, a, a great football team. And before the 2021 regular season, this was a team that I thought was going to have 13 wins. So it was interesting the way the 49ers season really panned out. But uh, J.C. Jackson, I think that that would be a great fit and, you know, can really help solidify that defense because we already know how good their offense is. Jumping back in with the free agency fits, we're going back to the wide receiver position. Guys, there's a lot of high-profile wide receivers um, that can really get paid extremely well this offseason. Now, I'm going to go to somebody that's coming off of an injury 
right? We still don't know how he's going to return, but I do think he'll come back, uh, be 100%, and will still play better football than what we've seen to this point. And that's Chris Godwin. You know, Tampa Bay is definitely an interesting scenario. And, you know, you really wonder how Chris Godwin feels, right? Because if he decides to stay in Tampa, he's not viewed as the number one wide receiver with Mike Evans there, right? That's probably something that every wide receiver, you know, that's played ever wants the chance to be is the guy. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Godwin wants that opportunity. And there's two fits that I'm going to provide that I think Chris Godwin can go and be that guy. And one of them would be Chicago. Look, Justin Fields, a young quarterback. We know that the experiment with Allen Robinson didn't really work out, but they already got their deep threat in Darnell Mooney, right? We know he could take the speed uh, out of the secondary, you know, really bring it over the top. And Chris Godwin, somebody that can work the short and intermediate routes, you know, the middle of the field, uh, along with being paired with a tight end like Cole Komet, um, that would be, you know, absolutely incredible for that offense and probably show a lot of growth in Justin Fields. So I definitely think that that's a, a scenario that could work out favorably for both sides because I'm sure Chris Godwin, like I said, wants to be the guy and wants to get paid. But a scenario where he might make a little, a little bit less money and it could still be, you know, as beneficial is, the Indianapolis Colts and Lou, I, I know me and you were talking about this on Sunday uh, back at the house. Uh, shout out to Lou and the Colts. Guys, it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do at that quarterback position. Uh, they're going to go to the draft. They're going to go to Carson Wentz, get a big veteran free agency guy because uh, I know that that's what a lot of the NFL offseason teams are really talking about at this point. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And like I said, Chris Godwin, I mean, going to the Colts, I, I think that that would be a great fit. You know, Jonathan Taylor is already a bell cow as it is. And Michael Pittman, I mean, do I have to say anything more? You know, Michael Pittman could be a, a great pair w- with Chris Godwin there. And I think the two of them would complement each other extremely well. We are going to the outside linebackers, and uh, this is a big name, but this is guy. This is a guy that's a little bit older in his career. I'm um, gonna be interesting to see, you know, what factors really come into to his decision for free agency. But I have Chandler Jones here, and guys, Chandler Jones at 32 years old. We know he's led the NFL in sacks multiple times, um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. But uh, I do think Chandler Jones has a great chance at re-signing. Uh, staying in Arizona. Uh, we do know that there's been some feud with Kyla Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, losing D-Hop a little bit last year clearly didn't help. But a fit that is outside of Arizona and is also a contending team, I could definitely see Chandler Jones going to the Buffalo Bills. And my other co-host, Kev, he would love um, for a move like that to happen. I just think that the Bills need a premier pass rusher, somebody on the defensive side that could always be viewed as a threat. And, you know, when you have a lot of the best talent at the quarterback position under center for your team, for your franchise, you always like to get them, you know, rattled and, and not playing their best. And what's a good way to do that is, is having a great pass rush. And, you know, when you think of the Bills, yeah, you can think of Ed Oliver, who was a high overall pick, but you can't really think of a guy that, you have to tell your team's quarterback or your franchise's quarterback, oh, man, you have to watch out for him. You know, he doesn't have that that T.J. Watt effect that, that the Pittsburgh Steelers do or that Chandler Jones effect that the Arizona Cardinals once did. So I do think that Chandler Jones going to the Buffalo Bills um, would be a good fit, but I would not be surprised if he signed back with the Arizona Cardinals. Guys, this was my first episode of my free agents, my top available free agents, and I gave you guys some fits. Make sure you guys stay tuned to the rest of the Since the Sandbox content. We have a lot coming out to you guys right now. We have our MTP series, Meet the People. We have our positional rankings. My top 25 is out. I just gave you guys my first episode of my top available free agent fits. The NFL draft coverage is coming real soon. Like I said, guys, make sure to stay tuned. And show some love. Five stars always. Peace out. For all these great iron and hard top, it's Kevlu and Ski since the sandbox.